over and say, here it is, you have it. You're going to fight for it. There's a great door. There's great uh, prophecies. There's great things right there in front of you. But you've got to fight for it. And if you're going to fight for it, you've got to learn how to strengthen yourself. You've got to learn that God is bigger than any devil. Come on. We're so afraid sometimes of Satan. It's like big Satan, little bitty God. No, 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 no. Come on. He's big. God's big. He's overcome everything. Jesus overcome everything, but we've got to possess it. God gives us a strength. It says in Isaiah 40, verse 29, it says, He gives strength to the weary. Come on. So if you're feeling weak, the Bible says it here. God gives you strength, not pills. Come on. God gives you strength. Come on. God gives us strength. Not going and doing your own thing. It says he gives strength. The only way when you're weary that you're going to get strong, a lasting strength is from the Lord. But I love this. God doesn't just, when he does something, the Bible says, press down, shaken together, running over. He doesn't just give you one thing. It says he gives strength to the weary and he increases the power of the weak. So he doesn't just give strength to the weary. If you feel, he then increases your power. Come on, it's incredible. You can get nothing from anyone like you can get from the Lord. Why do we always make it our last stop when we've tried everything else? Come on, like the woman with the issue of blood. She spent all her money, all her livelihood, and her last resort was God. What a waste of all that money. Sometimes we're the same. Come on, we spend everything. And our last resort is God. When he should be our first resort. Come on, we've got to learn to strengthen ourselves. We've got to learn to be strong. It says in verse 30, even youths grow tired. Well, that's good to hear. (laughs) One would wonder though sometimes. Even youths grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. But listen to this. Those whose hope is in the Lord. Come on, in the Lord, not in our government, not in our pay packet, not in our husband, not in our wife, not in our pastor. Those whose hope is who? In the Lord. Those whose hope is in the Lord. When our hope is in the Lord, it says what? He will renew your strength. He will renew your strength. Come on, when your hope is in him. He will renew your strength, not in other people. It's great to have other people. But when our hope is in God, he is the only one that can renew our strength. And it says, then you will soar on wings like eagles. You will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Come on, it's an incredible promise from the Lord when we wait upon him, when we strengthen ourselves in him. Colossians 1, 10 says this. We pray that you, this is Paul, we pray that you lead a life that is worthy of the Lord. Come on, that you live a life worthy of the Lord. We pray that you will please him in every way. So we want you to bear fruit in every good thing you do. Our life is about bearing fruit. Come on, in a world when it's about me, me, I, I, I'm not going to produce any fruit, everything's for me. Come on, even now we've got a generation of older people called Ski. Heard of them? Spend your kid's inheritance. (laughs) That's what they're called. That is so ungodly. God tells us to lay up an inheritance. Lay up an inheritance. We don't just lay um, money as well. It's a spiritual inheritance yeah. as well. But come on, it talks about he's praying that we lead a life worthy of the Lord. Well, if you're never victorious, come on, if you're always going through the same stuff, same stuff, same stuff, come on, 10 years later, you still got the same problems, the same things. That's not leading a life worthy of the Lord. Come on, that's not bearing good fruit. I want to tell you, I have never seen anybody who has been serious, come on, who's been, who wants to get rid of their stuff, who's been really serious, has got down, prayed, read the Word of God, put themselves under magic. I've never seen anybody like that fail and not get victory. Amen. What I see fail is people that keep going round and round and round and round. But you don't know what's happened to me. A bit like her. Come on. You don't know what's happened to me. But this has happened. And so and so did this to me. And so and so did that to me. 
No, it's time now where we've got to be strengthened. Come on. We have to live a life worthy of our Lord. Jesus died on the cross for you and I. He took everything. Our lives need to begin to reflect and shine Jesus. Come on. There needs to be fruit. You need to be standing up and breaking generational curses. Come on. You need to see a difference in your family. We're first generation Christian. Come from a whole line me of heathens. I don't know any Christians in my family, okay? Now I do, but before us. I come from a long line of heathens. He comes from a long line of alcoholic heathens. <laughs> Worst kind. Come on. Come from so much brokenness, abuse, all sorts of stuff. But we heard about Jesus. Come on, we gave our life to Jesus. We began to understand a generational blessing, that it was God blesses your generations. We understood about generational curses. So we began to do the hard work. We began, what, was it easy? No. God didn't tell us it was going to be easy. He never said, oh, here it is. Come. I mean, they tell you on the altar call, Come, give your life to Jesus. Oh, it's going to be wonderful. Sweet Jesus. Oh, you'll never be the same. My husband says he's going to do a message on what they didn't tell you on the altar call. <laughs> Come on, they entice us. It's wonderful. But there's a lot of stuff. Come on, because we have a lot of stuff. And what God's about is producing a godly generation. He says, I'm the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He thinks generationally. Come on, he talks generationally. He's wanting you to change the generation. That's what this Colossians is talking about, that we would bear fruit. So we've done the hard work. Now we've got three generations. Come on, our children have all served the Lord, all married as virgins, two pastors to churches. Our sons are marketplace minister. Now our grandchildren, come on, they're strong in the Lord. Our little granddaughter prays in tongues from the age of two. Come on, whenever you're sick, she tells you, I'm going to get the ointing oil. She gets the ointing oil and she comes and smothers you with the oil, drips it all over you. And like, you better now, she said. I'm just telling Pastor Sandy, she got to meet our little granddaughter when she was with us in May. And she was just telling us, our daughter tells us, Whenever she was sort of getting in a mood, she'd go off to the laundry. And my daughter, Sarah, so I'm thinking, what is she doing in that laundry? So she goes and listens at the door and Zara's sitting in there and she says, in Jesus' name, I command all the naughtiness to be gone. Get out of me in Jesus' name. Come on. Three years old, she delivers herself. That's a generational blessing. Come on knows how to deliver herself. She comes out and says to her mom, I'm all better now. <laughs> Come on, fix. See, that's what you're fighting for. You keep going round and round the mountain with your stuff, then it's going to go down to your generations because there's still an open door. Come on, there's still an open door. Somebody has to stop it. Come on, someone's got to stand in the gap and say enough is enough. You're not going to affect me. Come on, the finish is here. I'm going to fight you. Come on. Yeah, stop it. I'm going to stop it. That's what we did. We decided we're going to stop it for our generation. It's not going any further. And see, you understand, a generational blessing is so powerful. It is so powerful. Because I was asking the Lord this one day, we're dealing with all these generational curses. I said, God, they're so strong. And the Lord said, if a generational curse can be so strong, imagine how much more a generational blessing. Come on. And I've seen now, just through us doing what we've done, we've got it covered for about 10 generations now. And even more, when our children's children, come on, you can bring that in. It's an awesome way to live, to see your children walking, marrying the right people. Come on, all marrying as virgins, marrying people who they're meant to marry. And then seeing, see, they don't have the struggles that we had. They don't have, they still have stuff. You're never free from stuff, but they don't have the struggles that we had to have because we stood in the gap and broke that generational curse. Come on, you've got to be unselfish. Start to bear fruit in your life. There needs to be fruit in your life. Ask somebody. Don't ask yourself if I got fruit in my life because you'll always tell yourself you have. 
Come on. We need, that's why we need mentors and people round about us. Ask them, can you see fruit in my life? Every year there should be some fruit in your life. You should be growing. You know, our prayer is always that we're better today, uh, today than we were yesterday. I'll never be perfect, but I want to be better today than I was yesterday. I want to be growing every year. See, Paul points out that knowledge in itself is empty. We can have all the knowledge about Jesus, about the Bible. But to be worth anything, it says we must lead a changed life and right living. Come on, to be worthy so people can look at you and say, wow, I've seen where you've come from. I know what you've come from. There must be a God. Come on, there must be a God. I know what you were like when people meet up with you that haven't seen. You see, one of my saddest things is to meet people that I haven't seen for five, six years and they tell you the same sob story. They're still stuck in the same stuff. They've still got the same hurts. Come on. They've still got the same pain. I feel sad. Well, there's an element of sadness. I often just want to slap them like him. Come on. <laughs> it's like, stop it. For goodness sake, stop it. Stop the cycle. Stop the craziness. And verse 11 says, we want you to grow to know God better. Come on, this is what he's saying. We want you to know and grow to know God better. Why? So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. See, when you get to know him better, you want to live a life worthy of him. And it says in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. We should be growing in the knowledge of God. Being strengthened, come on, being strengthened, there it is, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience. There's the, the clincher. Come on, <laughs> that you'll grow in great power, great knowledge, great strength. Come on, bearing all fruit. But you have to have endurance and you have to have patience. Come on, you have to have endurance. See, a lot of us want God to be our little genie God. Rub the lamp three times and he grants our wishes. Come on, we want him to answer everything. But God knows sometimes you've got to go through stuff. You've got to have endurance. He's toughening you up. He's making you stronger. See, we all know that if you give a child everything, they become spoiled brats. They never appreciate anything. Come on. They're ungrateful. They're unruly. So how much more do you think God He knows that when we go through stuff, come on, that it creates endurance. See, when your situation seems impossible, here's the answer in Romans 4 verse 18. It says this. Against all hope, this is Abraham. We know that he was old and he was told he was going to have a baby. And it says this, Abraham in hope believed. Come on, he believed. Some of us have got to be believers again. Come on, we've got to believe the word of God. He is your healer. He is your deliverer. But it doesn't just happen overnight. It never happens. It says with great endurance and patience. Our little granddaughter, once again, she's telling me, she's trying not to get up as early. She used to go to bed from 4.30 to 4.30. Now she's 6 till 5.30. So we're trying to teach her you don't get up before Mr. Sun. And so <laughs> we're trying to train her a little bit now. But she, she's telling me, I said, how did you go last night? She said, well, I laid in bed and she said, I tried so hard. She said, my eyes just wouldn't shut, but I prayed to God that they would shut and it didn't work. <laughs> come on I said that's all right you just keep trying come on keep trying and he will answer your prayer you'll eventually learn to go back to sleep Abraham in hope believed and so he became the father of nations just as it been said to him so shall be your offspring and verse 19 says this without weakening in his faith come on without weakening in his faith he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead since he was about 100 years old and that his wife Sarah's womb was also dead. This guy's got a, a triple-fold whammy. He's old, she's old and her womb's dead. Come on, the Bible doesn't give him much hope. He says, you're going to be the father of many nations. Come on. 
But he's got a three-year-old, I'm a year old, she's old. It's not like he had a, you know, if he was old and he had a 22-year-old, young, fertile woman, you could have a bit of hope. But not only is Sarah old, her womb's dead. But you know, God likes those impossible situations. Come on. You can't be in a more possible situation than this. But even if you are, come on, you've got to be in hope, believe, which means in God, believe. Strengthen yourself. Don't look at the circumstances. Come on, don't look. If he'd focus on she's old, I'm old, I don't even know if we can, whatever. (laughs) This is G-rated, okay? (laughs) But he didn't focus on that. In hope he believed. He believed what God had promised. And see, we've got to believe what the Lord has promised us. We've got to strengthen ourselves. No use looking at the same, well, it's hopeless. It's never going to change. It's always going to be like this. It's gonna, come on, we have to strengthen ourselves. God, you said that this, but God, you said, come on, I'm hoping in the words that you've promised me. Lord, you prophesied that word over me. You spoke those words. You've confirmed those words. I never made those words up. Come on, the word of God says it. Come on, we're going to decree. Job 22, 28 says, you decree a thing and it shall be established. So he faced the facts, okay? The facts are she's old, I'm old, and the womb's dead. They were the facts. But he didn't let the facts weaken his faith. Come on, that's it. The facts might be you're broke. The facts might be you're sick. Come on. The facts might be that it looks hopeless. The facts, whatever the facts are, are the facts. But don't let the facts weaken your faith. This is what Abraham didn't do. Yep, that's the facts. But I'm not going to be weakened in my faith because, Lord, you said that I would be the father of nations. And it says, yet he did not waver through unbelief regarding the promise of God. Come on. He didn't go back and forth. He didn't waver. He didn't waver. Oh, well, maybe I'm never going to get healed. Oh, maybe it's never, my husband's never going to change. Oh, maybe we're always going to be broke. Oh, maybe I'm never going to be any good. Come on. He did not waver, which means he was firm. Come on. He was solid in what the Lord had spoken to him, the promise of God. But it says this, what? But he was strengthened. Come on, he was strengthened in his faith. He was strengthened in his God. He was strengthened in the promises of God. See, that's what we have to do. When we've got facts, this, this, and this, we have to be strengthened by our faith. Come on, we've got to be strengthened that God, you're my healer. You're my deliverer. Come on, God, you're my everything. That's what we need to be strengthened just like him. And he gave God the glory. How important that we always give the glory to God. And verse 21 says this, being fully persuaded, fully persuaded. Come on, he wasn't half persuaded, being fully persuaded. See, if you're not fully persuaded, then the devil's got a foothold. That's why some people are still going round and round and round the same mountain because you're not fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he said he would do. You know, I thank God I got saved in a strong Pentecostal church, got saved under strong leaders who just said, come on, get your act together and do it. They didn't take any rubbish from you. Come on, they just told you. They would be called controlling and manipulating today. They would be called dictatorship. But no, they weren't. They were great. Come on, it's made us who we are today because they're like, you're not going to feel sorry for yourself. Come on, you need to be swayed. Come on, they were there with us. Tell us, come on, God's promised you. You will be healed. Come on, it will get better. This is what the Lord has said. Come on, you have to be fully persuaded. If you're only half persuaded, if you're only three quarters persuaded, Satan knows there's a quarter. Come on, he knows there's a half. He knows, come on. He knows when you're not fully persuaded. You can convince everybody else you're fully persuaded. But Satan knows when you're not fully persuaded. See, he was fully persuaded that God, what? Had the power to do what he promised. Come on, let that sink in for a minute. Are you fully persuaded that God has the power to do what he promised? Come on, that's a question. Are you fully persuaded? Or are you wavering back and forth? Mm, maybe today, maybe not. 
Come on, God has the power to do what he says. But it doesn't always happen just like that. It doesn't always happen. There's, there's things. It's awesome when God comes and does something miraculous. When he does something, you pray. Or sometimes you don't even pray. You think it and he answers it. That's awesome. Yeah. And he does do that just to surprise us every now and again. I don't know. <laughs> but there's times, there's things where I've had to push through. There's things in my life. There's times where it's like, God, this is so massive. It's so big. I feel like all I'm doing is dealing with stuff. I feel like all I am is on the altar calls. I feel like all I do is cry. Come on. I, all the time, I'm always on the altar. God, is it ever going to end? The Lord began to show me that there was so much in my life. If he ripped it all out at once, it would be a massive gaping hole. I wouldn't be able to handle it. Come on. One session was so emotional, so draining, just about wiped me out for a couple of days. And so then one day the Lord just said, it is done. Come on, it's finished. And so when I heard him say that, I never doubted it. It's finished. No more. I don't have to. Come on, I'm not going there anymore. That's my past. It's finished. Amen. But there was a time. It was little bit by little bit by little bit by little bit. But I was persuaded that there would come a day that we would be whole. Come on, just like Abraham. We have to face the facts about the condition of our world, our situation. Come on, the condition of our world. If you look at our world, if you watch too much CNN or Fox, you'll be a mess. Come on. I say people better not sometimes to watch some of that stuff. If you've got a spirit of fear, then don't watch the news. Come on. Don't watch it because you'll never leave your house. If you watch the news, you'll never leave your house. You'll never get on a plane. You'll never go anywhere. You won't get out and drive your car. You won't even go down to the local mall. The facts is our world is dying, but God said everything. Everything that's going on today is in the Bible. Yeah. Come on, God already said it was there. They're the facts. Yeah. But come on, we're not weakened in our faith by facts. The facts that are in the world should have nothing to do with the weakening of your faith. We've got to stand on the promises of God. Come on, we've got to be strengthened in God. If you're struggling with matters of the heart, if you're broken and you're hurt, this is what it says. Psalm 27, verse 13. I would have lost heart unless I had believed that I'd see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Come on, you've got to remember that. We lose heart, but I got to remember, I will see the goodness of God. Come on, it will happen in my lifetime. Come on, I will see it. I will see it in my children and my children's children. Come on, we've got to believe that. Don't lose heart. It may not be happening right now, but you can't lose heart. You've got to believe that you're going to see the goodness of God. There were days where I could have lost heart. There were days where I felt it's too big. It's never going to change. But I want to tell you what, now I see the goodness of God. Come on. I'm walking in the goodness of God. When I see each of my five grandchildren worshiping God, loving the Lord, believing God, I'm seeing the goodness of God. Come on. That they don't have to go through what we went through. Come on. That they're blessed. Come on. That they have a peaceful life because they know the Lord. They have such faith. Verse 14 says this, wait on the Lord. We're going to learn to wait on the Lord. You know, I believe in the world today, we want everything instant. We live in a microwave generation. We stand in front of the microwave one minute and we tell it to hurry up. (laughs) Come on, that's what we're like. Remember, we were going on a road trip and um, we pulled through KFC and my husband wanted some nuggets. When you go on a road trip with my husband, we only stop for fuel. And when he stops for fuel every 600 Ks, you've got to go to the toilet, get your supplies, get your drinks because we don't stop again. Okay, that's it. That's the way he drives. We're getting to our destination. We stop for fuel. But you have to be careful because so many times he's not going to leave the the gas station without us. It's like he does it, yeah. And so I remember this one time he really wanted nuggets, loved KFC nuggets. And the guy said there's a three-minute wait on the nuggets. He's like, three minutes? No, forget it. I'm not waiting for that. I'm like, it's three minutes. He said, I thought this was fast food. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) wait on the Lord. Come on, wait on the Lord. And what? Be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart. Come on, he'll strengthen your heart. 
if you're sorrowful, if your heart's broken, if you've been hurt, we need to wait on the Lord. Come on. If you've been disappointed, you feel like, well, I don't see things happening. In actual fact, it looks worse. Come on. Your heart's broken. Your heart's discouraged. You've lost hope. You've lost your vision. This is what the Lord tells us. We've got to remember that we will see the goodness of the Lord. So we have to wait on Him. We have to be of good courage. And what's it say? He'll strengthen your heart. He'll strengthen your heart. And he says, wait, I say, on the Lord. You know, when I see something repeated in the Bible, it means we didn't get it the first time. Whenever God repeats himself, it means we didn't get it. Because I imagine here that he's saying, well, wait on the Lord. And then he says, he'll strengthen your heart. And he says, yeah, but I've waited on him. I've been waiting for 30 years. I really have. How long should I wait? I've been waiting 50 years. It was. So he says again, I said to you, wait and he says wait on the Lord then he says again this person must have been really persistent but God I'm nearly gonna die come on I'm 80 and I'm nearly gonna die but he says what wait on the Lord wait on the Lord come on don't wait on someone else on your boss on your pay packet come on on your pastor on your husband on your wife your ba- it says wait on the Lord be of good courage and what he shall strengthen your heart He shall strengthen your heart. He shall strengthen your heart. If you've been hurting in your heart, you've had disappointment, you've really been struggling. Lord, I've been waiting 40 years, 50 years, 20 years, two minutes. (laughs) Whatever it is. (laughs) Three minutes. And you're feeling discouraged. Come on. You feel like it should have happened. Let's just take a moment and close your eyes. Let's just agree, we're going to wait on God. Lord, I will wait for you. Lord, I'll wait for you. Thank you, Lord, that I'd be of good courage. Thank you, Lord. Forgive me when I've been impatient. Forgive me, Lord, when I've not waited on you. But Lord, I thank you now as we agree to wait on you, Father, to not be impatient to know that we'll see your promises. Lord, I pray you strengthen those hearts right now. Come on, Lord, that you'll strengthen, that you'll strengthen the heart that's disappointed, the heart that's discouraged, the heart that's broken. Lord, the heart that feels like it cannot go on. Lord, I thank you right now that you strengthen their hearts today. You know, your heart is the center of everything. Come on, it's all right. Without your heart, you're dead. When your heart stops beating, you're dead. No, I believe we can be spiritually dead and our heart stops beating for the Lord. Come on, we stop waiting on Him. We've given up on Him. Lord, I thank you today that you're bringing life back in, that you're strengthening hearts today. The broken heart, Father God, you're strengthening it today. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You know, he gives us strength and he protects us from evil. The world's getting a darker place, but you don't need to fear. Come on, it says in 2 Thessalonians 3, verse 3, but the Lord is, here it is again, faithful. Come on, he's faithful. He's a proven God. He's proven over the generations. He's not just a flash in the pan, the latest fad. He's proven. He's proven time and time and time again. You can trust in him. He's a proven God. He is a faithful God. And it says he will strengthen you and he'll protect you from the evil one. He will protect you from all evil. You don't need to be afraid. Come on, the world might be getting darker, but you don't need to be afraid because God's with you everywhere you go. He is with you. He's your strength. He will protect you from the evil one. Come on, Psalm 91 tells us all about that, that he protects us, that he keeps us, that a thousand can be falling here. There can be trouble in your next door neighbor's tent, but your tent, the enemy will not come near it. Come on, it's a promise of God. We are protected from the evil one the word of God strengthen us Hebrews 4 verse 12 it says this for the word of God is living 
Come on, God's Word is living. The Bible is living. It's not dead words. And it says this, it is powerful. Come on, it is living. God's Word is living. It's powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces even the division of our soul and our spirit and of the joints and the marrows. And it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Come on, God's Word is powerful. Come on, it will bring you strength. That's one of the ways we strengthen ourselves is with the Word of God. When you're disappointed, here's another one, Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear. Do not fear, for I am with you. Come on, God's with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. He's not just with you. He is your God. It's personal. Come on, he's not just with you. He is your God. And he says, I'll strengthen you. And I'll help you and I'll uphold you. Here it is again. He doesn't just strengthen you. He helps you. He upholds you and my right, with my righteous right hand. And you know, at times you can have the pressure mounting round about you. Your workload can seem too much. Who feels sometimes your workload just seems so much? Come on. just feels like, am I ever going to get this done? Yeah. Wow, there's not enough hours in the day. Nehemiah 6 verse 9 says this, They were all trying to frighten us, thinking their hands will get too weak for the work. See, that's what the enemy does. He has fear. He tries to bring fear round about. That's his greatest weapon. He tries to bring fear round about. This is what they were trying to do, Nehemiah. Frighten them, saying that their hands are too weak. You won't be able to do the work. That's what he does. You'll never be able to do the work. You'll never be able to overcome that. You'll never get strong. Come on. You'll never get healed. That's what he continually tells you. And it says, and the work would not be complete. But listen to this. But. Everyone say but. but. I prayed. Come on, here it is, Nehemiah. But I prayed. Come on, Nehemiah says, but I prayed. Now, strengthen my hands. Strengthen my hands. Come on, strengthen my hands. When it be, you become weak, when it feels overwhelming, when the load feels too much, when everything seems too much, when you're frightened, when you're intimidated, when you feel like, I don't know how I'm going to get through this. It says, but Nehemiah, what was his answer? He prayed. Lord, strengthen my hands. Everyone put out your hands. Hands. Put your hands down and say, Lord, strengthen my hands. Strengthen my hands for the work that's ahead. Come on. That's all you've got to do sometimes. You're feeling weak. You're feeling like you can't. All you've got to do is pray. It's so simple. Sometimes we complicate it. We want all these. Co but it says, Nehemiah prayed. Lord, strengthen my hands. And they did something miraculous. Come on. They did a miraculous thing. Like I said, God doesn't promise us that it'd be easy. He didn't promise us that we'd never walk through stuff. He said, when you go through the fire. He said, when you go through the flood. He didn't say, well, if you happen to see a flood in your life, if you happen to go through fire. No, no, no. He guarantees you. Come on. He guarantees you. He says, when? When? When you go through that fire. When you go through a flood. But then he says, it's all right. I'm with you. You won't drown. You might go under for air and gulp and feel like you're going to drown. You might want to drown yourself sometimes. But he'll just push you back up. Come on. Because he's right there with you. He says he's with you. It's not your last breath unless he says. Come on. But he does promise us that he'll strengthen us. Come on. He promises that. He promises. Do you know that even Jesus needed strength? This is incredible when I saw this, Luke 22, verse 41. It's amazing when you look at this. It says, and he was withdrawn from them about a stone's throw away. And he knelt down and he prayed. Here's Jesus doing what we need to do. Come on. He kneels down and he prays. Some of us need to get back on our knees. You're too old, then just improvise sit on your bum on the floor or something I don't know <laughs> can I say that word here bottom <laughs> okay he he knelt down and he prayed come on he knelt down and he prayed he didn't get all religious come on he didn't get all crazy he knelt down and he prayed 
He said this, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Do you know, in the other trailer, he actually prayed this prayer three times. Three times. Because what he was facing was overwhelming. He was Jesus. Don't we always see him as this amazing Jesus, powerful, overcome, not afraid of anything? But he's asking the Lord. Three times he asked God. And now the translation even talks about that he dripped blood. He was in so much anguish over what he had to do, about what he was facing. He's actually asking the Lord, can I please not do this? Can I please not? But the interesting part, he says, if it's your will, take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours. Come on, not my will, but yours. Not my will, but yours. Three times, three times he asked the Lord. He's in anguish. He doesn't want to do this. Lord, please. You know, there's times when it's tough, but we need to get down. We're going to kneel. We've got to cry out to God and say, God, please take it away if you can. But not my will, yours. Because imagine if Jesus didn't do that. Come on, imagine. You don't know what impact your trials and tribulations, you breaking through, are going to have on others. Come on, when we were going through all our stuff, never imagine, could we imagine right then and now, the impact it would have on our generations. Because if I could see up ahead to today, you would have said, oh, well, I'll do it, bring it on. But we don't see that we've got prophetic words but we can't really see we know God said yep your generation's going to be blessed your children all these things but we actually can't see that it's just a promise but the impact it has on generations the impact just us and our children are having on other people's lives the impact of what Jesus did for you and I but he still asked God, can I get out of this? But not my will, your will be done. Your will be done. And what happens here, it says this. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven and what? Strengthened him. Come on, bought him strength. Bought him strength. Bought him strength. He needed, he was Jesus. But he needed strength. And you see what happens is, after that, he goes off. And he said, the hour has come, my betrayer is at hand. See, now he's got to settle in his heart. After crying out in anguish, he's so, Lord, please, if I don't have to do this, but not my will, your will. And so after the angel comes and strengthens him, come on, then he's able to say, okay, fellas, we're off. Come on, that's what he, he got up. He said, the hour's come, my betrayer's at hand. He knew then, come on, in that strengthening from the Lord, he knew this is what i got to do and now he's strong. Come on, he understands. I've been strengthened by God. I can do this. Come on, God's with me. But he knew God was with him. He walked with him. He fellowship with him. He had such an intimate relationship with the Lord, but he still needed strengthening for the trial that was at hand. Come on, if he needed that, how much more, you and I? But we've got to learn to fall on our knees. Come on, we've got to learn to fall on our knees and pray. I want to look at David now in 1 Samuel, and I'm going to finish with 1 Samuel 30, verse 6. This is David. He's been out doing the Lord's work, out slaying the enemy, winning land, doing what God's asked him to do. He comes back from the battle and everything's gone. All his possessions, his wife, children, his men's wives, everything's gone. And says this, Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him, 
because the soul of the people was grieved, every man for his sons and his daughters. Now, it's interesting here. David's distressed, but also how his men are really distressed. They want to kill him. Come on, they want to kill him. So he's not only dealing with the grief of losing everything, he's now got his men, his great battle warriors he, that are with him. They're all going to kill him. Sometimes you'll feel like everyone's going to kill you, everyone's against you. But what does David do? It says this, David strengthened himself in the Lord. Do you know he's the only one that strengthened himself? It says David strengthened himself in the Lord, what? He's God. He didn't strengthen himself in his previous battles, in his pride, in how good he was or what he'd done. Come on. He strengthened himself. What? In the Lord, he's God. He's God. He's rock. That's who he strengthened himself in. Not in anything else. Not in drugs. Not in alcohol. Not in his pride. Not in people saying, well, tell how good I am. I'm so good. No, no, no. He strengthened himself in the Lord. He's God. It's personal. Come on. David had a personal relationship with the Lord. Lord. And then it says this, so David inquired to the Lord. Now it's interesting, he dealt with his emotions first. He was greatly distressed, come on. He was in anguish, he was distressed. His men are going to kill him. It's a tough time. You never make a decision based on your emotions. Come on, you never ever go and inquire of the Lord when you're emotional. Don't ask the Lord when you're emotional because your emotions will answer for you. So what David did, he strengthened himself in the Lord first. See, when you're all emotional, when something bad happens, when you're feeling emotional, when you're feeling, don't ask the Lord the questions then. David strengthened himself in the Lord, his God. He went to God and he strengthened himself. He most probably worshipped. He's reminded God of the promises that God had spoken to him. He strengthened himself. And then when he felt like, okay, emotions, you're out of the way. I can feel the spirit of God moving. I'm feeling strong. I'm feeling pumped up up again the griefs left me the distress has left me the fears left me now I'm going to inquire of you God come on it's a valuable lesson right here never ever inquire of God when you're emotional I see people do it time and time again and you get an emotional answer and this is what the Lord said he said to the Lord shall I pursue this truth shall I overtake them and he answered him, pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and without fail, recover all. Without fail, recover all. Come on. Without fail, you shall recover all. See, I love what my husband says. He's a good tracker. He says that he would have come back and you would have known where the enemy went, which way he went. Come on. Back then, horses, donkeys, whatever they had, there was tracks. You could see there would have been massive tracks with all them leaving. He says he would have just, okay, there they're gone. Let's go and chase them. But see, David knew there could be a trap. Come on, you're natural. His emotions would have been saying, and his men would have been saying, let's go chase them. Come on, we're warriors. We've just come back. We've just killed all these people. We're warriors. Come on, we're strong men. We can do it. They could have just gone on emotion and gone down that track, but it could have been a trap of the enemy. The enemy could have been laying in wait to get them. But see, he inquired of God, and God said, yep, David, you're going to recover. He strengthened himself. Come on. He strengthened himself in quiet, and God said this. I'm pretty sure Philippians 4 verse 12 says this. This is the secret to being content and having peace in every situation. Come on, this is the secret. We're all into secrets these days. Everyone says if you want to write a book, just put the secret in and it'll be the bestseller. The secret to this and the secret to that and it'll be a bestseller. <laughs> Philippians 4 12 says this. I know what it is to be in need and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned that the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether I'm well-fed or hungry, whether I'm living in plenty or in want, this is the key. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Come on. I can do all things through what? Him who gives me strength. If I'm poor, 
If I'm sick, come on, if I'm in a hopeless situation, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Just stand. Let's stand tonight. The secret is what? I can do all things. How? Through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, you can do everything. How? Through Christ who strengthens you. Through Christ who strengthens you. Remembering that. You can do everything. Come on, you can do. He doesn't say you can do some things. It says, oh, what does all mean? All. 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 Sometimes we've got to tell ourselves, all means all. Sometimes we're like, well, maybe I could do that. Or maybe I mm, don't know if I can do that. No, no, no. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on, through Christ. We just got to get back to the basics. We've complicated things. When you're struggling, He is our strength. Come on, kneel down, pray. The Word of God, praying in tongues. Come on, strengthen me, Lord. Believing for strength. Every day, Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen me, God. Strengthen my hands. Strengthen my mind. Strengthen my heart. Strengthen my body. Whatever it is. And when you understand, your strength is from Him. And no matter what's ahead of you, I can do all things. Why? Jesus could do all things. God sent an angel and strengthened Him. Come on, Jesus needed strength. Jesus needed strengthening. We need strengthening. But sometimes we're looking at pills and doctors and money and all sorts of things to strengthen us. They're all shifting sands. It says build your life on the rock, Jesus. That's the only solid thing you can build on. Everything else is shifting sands. We need to be strengthened. Thank you, Lord. Let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, I thank you right now. Lord, that you are our strength, that you are our rock. Father, forgive us the times we've been weak. Forgive us, Lord, when we've looked to others. Forgive us when our hearts become discouraged. Forgive us, Lord, when we've given up. Forgive us, Lord, when we said it's not working. Lord, when we're in distress. But Lord, just like David, just like Jesus, Isaiah, Nehemiah, Moses, all of them, Father, they strengthened themselves in you. Now, Father, tonight, I strengthen myself. Lord, I pull on that strength. I pull on that anointing. Father, I thank you for your strength, that you'll strengthen me, Father God. You're strengthening me. You're strengthening me. Father, I thank you that I'm strong. Come on, I am strong. Lord, in you, I am strong. Father, I thank you right now. If you need strength, then just pull it down tonight. Come on, pull it down upon yourself, that strength. Pull it down upon yourself. See strength coming into you. See strength entering into your mind, into your heart, into your body. See the strength of God. Father, I thank you that I can do all things. Lord, I can do all things. Through you, Christ, that gives me strength. Come on, you give me strength. Why does he give us strength? Because he himself was strengthened. And he did what he overcome that. Come on, he overcome the weakness. He overcome the point of not being able to do it. He overcome it. He asked the Lord to strengthen him. And God sent an angel. If you will apply this principle to your life, I guarantee in a couple of months, you will be different. This time next year, you will be completely different. If you'll apply this principle, Lord, strengthen me. Come on, when you're struggling, we don't have to have any grand Jewish religious actions. We say, Lord, strengthen me. Lord, strengthen me. Strengthen me. Give you pray, Lord, if this, you know, if we learn to say, God, if this is a fire that I need to go through, then I'm going through it. I always ask the Lord, whenever a battle or something comes up, the first thing we do is inquire of God. Lord, is this a fire of 
the devil? Is this just an attack of the enemy? We ask the Lord, Lord, have we sinned? Come on. Sometimes we can be going the wrong direction and we're asking the Lord. But we're doing our will, not God's will. We're asking, Lord, deliver me. But He's not going to do it because you're where you want to be. You're going where you want to go. So there's times we have to ask, Lord, are we, have we sinned? Are we going in a wrong direction? Have we gone our way and not your way? But then as soon as we get the all clear, then we're like, okay, then this is a fire we have to go through. I'm a fire runner. I'm not dancing at the beginning of the fire. I'm not going in the fire and out of the fire, one foot in, one fire. It's a waste of time. I want to get through that fire as quick as I can. Come on. Because on the other side, there's always breakthrough. Come on. There's always a promise of God. There's always a, there's some fires we have to go through. Because I have an assurance that when this is a fire of God, that I'll endure it. Come on. That I'm going to make it through and that He strengthens me. Come on. And that He's with me. Come on. That He's with me. I can have that assurance. Right? I'm in a fire. But you are with me right now, God. I'm going to be okay. I'm not going to be burned. Come on, I'm not going to die. You know what? I'm not even going to smell of smoke when I come out of that fire. Now, thank you, Lord. You're strengthening your people today, Father God. Lord, forgive us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. This a lady here. Can pray for you. Here, you've got your eyes closed. Put your hand. Deborah. Father, I thank you for Deborah right now. Lord, I thank you. The Lord says, Deborah, I'm strengthening you to a new level, to a new place. And the Lord says, daughter, you've been through some difficult and some hard things. And it feels like you just get through. Oh, as I see you going through like this tunnel way. And it's like you seem to get a clear way through the woods. But then you feel you do all this hard work. You get it cleared and you get around the corner. And it's like there's another whole lot of prickles and bushes. And, and there doesn't seem a pathway anymore. So you're like, okay, I can do this. And you get through and you push through. And then you seem like you get every time you get a little bit of freedom, it feels like another lot comes upon you. But I hear the Lord saying, daughter, you're making it. God's saying, you're coming to the end. You know, I see what I, I see is that you've gone three quarters of the way through this and the enemy's tried to bring discouragement round about right now and try and tell you to give up. But God says, you haven't come this far to give up. And what I see then, I see this incredible field. I see a field of victory. I see a harvest in the field. I see flowers, which God is saying is a beautiful beauty of God. Now I see this, it just said everything you need is in this place. So God is saying to you, don't give up now. The Lord says, this is a season now. You felt worn out, but God says, I'm strengthening you. I'm strengthening you. Father, I thank you for your supernatural strength. Release it upon her life today, Father God. I thank you for it right now in Jesus' name. This lady up the back in the black and white, what's your name? No, you, you're turning around. Yep, yep. Tammy, Father, I thank you for Tammy today. Lord, I thank you that you're releasing a fresh hope upon her life today. God says, it's not over. It's not over. And Lord says, daughter, I just see that you, you feel discouraged. You feel, Lord, I, I'm not sure what, you know, you just feel like you're at the end of you. But God says, that's good because when the end of you becomes, the beginning of me start. And Lord says, watch and see the mighty hand of God. Watch and see His deliverance come upon your life. And the Lord says, daughter, God says, you've been in a marathon race. And God says, you feel at the end of a marathon, we can hit walls. We feel like we're going to just not make it. We feel like there's nothing left in us. But then a wind comes, a second wind, a second strength comes. The Lord says, now your second wind, your second strength is coming. The Lord says, strengthen yourself, strengthen yourself, strengthen yourself. I feel like God has given you some keys tonight to be honored in, just push in it. And I feel like for you, it's like, what have I been thinking? It's almost like you're like, oh my God. But you know what? That's going to give you greater strength because now you're going to say, enemy, oh boy, you thought that. You know what? I just see you like that, the woman in the war room. And it's like she goes through her house. It's like she gets her eyes open and she goes through her house and she tells devil, you've had this and you've done that. And she goes there and she tells him, now you get out of my house, you get off my property. You go. The Lord says, you're going to give him his marching orders. And the Lord says, you're going to see the victory. So the Lord says, now I'm strengthening you. You're a warrior. There's a warfare anointing.
anointing upon your life. And God says, daughter, but the enemy's tried to squash it and squash it and squash it. But Lord says, now I'm with lifting you up. I'm strengthening you with a greater authority and greater anointing. And Lord said, he's tried to keep you in the chicken's pen. He's tried to keep you with your wings clipped. But God says, you're an eagle. You're not a chicken. You're an eagle. I gave you wings to fly. And Lord says, now you're going to begin to soar. You're going to soar like the eagle. You're going to be the eagle that I've called you to be. Now, Lord, I break off every every stronghold. I break off every power of the enemy right now has tried to clip her wings. Lord, I thank you now. She's going to soar as the eagle that you've called her to be. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. The lady in the black up the back, what's your name? Yep. Tina, Tina, I just hear the Lord saying to you, it's time to come out. I feel like there's been a season, you've been locked in a cave. You've been locked in that place. And the Lord says, you know what? Some of it, you've made it a bit comfortable, you know, because it just feels like, I don't know if I can do this. And it's like for a season, you tried and you did something, but you're like, it's scary out there. It's scary being vulnerable. It's scary being out. And it's, you know, I feel like there's times you put out there and you got smacked again. It's like you got squashed back down again. And you know what? Here's a plan of the enemy. And God says, now I want you to come out. And God says, as you begin to make that step and come out of that strong, come out of that place. The Lord says, daughter, there's no going back. God says, I'm boarding up the cave. God says, I'm not going to allow you to go back there anymore because the Lord says, I've given you freedom. God said, freedom, I've given to you. And the Lord says, daughter, you're going to even be a one who'll deliver others from the very things that you've been through. And you know why? That's why the enemies try to push and push against you because good as you get stronger you know what there's a light that's going on and you're know, like devil you tried to do it understanding i'm not selling for this in my life i'm doing for generations for people that i haven't even met i'm breaking through for them as well and the lord says daughter you're gonna have a powerful hand that's gonna pluck people out of darkness you're gonna take them out of darkness you're gonna stand with them you're gonna say hey i've been where you've been and God says it was a season, the stuff you've been through. God says, I didn't cause it, but I'll use it. God says, I'll use it for good. I'll use it for good. So I hear the Lord saying, shake off the dust. Come on, shake off the old things. God saying, now begin to walk out. God says, begin to say, you are my strength. For you, it's most probably going to have to be sometimes two, three times a day. You're going to have to strengthen yourself. You're going to have to strengthen yourself. You're going to have to, because it's like the enemy's bombarded you and bombarded you with thoughts and with things and stuff that's happened. But Lord says, daughter, as you begin to just keep saying, Lord, strengthen me. Lord, strengthen me. The Lord says, you'll look back in one month. You'll look back in two months. And then you'll look back and you'll laugh and think, what? That used to be me. Come on. You'll look back and you'll laugh. You, what? That little thing had me bound. And the Lord says, it'll give you greater authority and greater anointing. Now, Lord, I thank you for a couple of people around about it. Just lay hands on it. Father, I thank you for strength today. Lord, I thank you for that strength, that you're strengthening her. You've been running on empty. And Lord says, I'm filling you up today. God says, I'm filling you up. I'm filling you with my anointing, with, with my power. And Lord says, you're just going to go from strength to strength, level to level. You've got too much to give to stay where you are today. You've got heaps to give. You've got lots to give. You know, I feel like God's saying, you're like Gideon. Who, me? Who, me? And God says, yes, you. You know, Gideon was like, where is the God that promised miracles? He asked that question. He said, where is the God of miracles? And God didn't answer his question. He just says, you're my man of valor. And you know what? Gideon went on and did what he's supposed to do. So Lord, I thank you. You are a God's woman of valor. Come on. You're God's mighty woman. Father, I thank you for it right now. Lord, I break off every wrong thought. I break off every negative thought. I break off generational patterns. You know, I feel like there's been a generation of failure, a spirit of failure. So Father, I break that off her life today. That spirit of failure, I break it from her today. You've called her to succeed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. This man up beside you, what's your name? Yep. Justin. Father, I thank you for Justin today. 
Father, I thank you, Lord, that you're strengthening him. Lord, you bring your strength to Justin. Justin, I feel like you've believed, you've believed. You've always been someone, you got an up attitude. You know, you're, you're upbeat. You, you know, you're just okay. But sometimes it's a bit mechanical because that's just what we do. We believe. We, you've trained yourself not to think negative. You've trained yourself to, to be that way. And God says that's good. But I feel like the Lord's saying now, there's a new supernatural strength that's coming. I feel like God's doing something. Um, it's like, I feel like, yep, you've done this, I've done that. It's almost like you know, you get, okay, this is what I do, step one, two, and three. But I feel like God's breaking out of all that. God's doing something miraculous in your life and through your life. And Lord says, hey, don't don't worry about dotting your I's and crossing your T's. Come on. God's saying, you know, you're still going to have, you have perfection. That's who you are. You have a spirit of, um, not perfection, excellence. You have an excellent spirit. But I feel like that God is doing something new and something fresh in your life. And I feel like He's adding more. You know, someone's going to, God's going to say, go left. And you're like, but Lord, the direction's right. We should be going this way and doing that. But I feel like God's taking you on the ride of your life. But I feel like there's a new level of flowing in the Spirit like never before. Hearing the voice of God like never before. Moving and flowing. You know, you've built the foundation. You've built and you've built and you've done everything. You've been faithful. You've asked the Lord. But God says, now we're going on a whole new adventure. God's, you know, you've been crying out to God. You've been crying out for more. God. And it's almost like, like Jesus, that sometimes it's just the groaning and because you're, you're just so desperate for more of God. And the Lord says, I, I've heard you cry. And God says, watch and see. And I feel like the Lord, there's things God's spoken to you that you feel like have been a long time, a long time, a long time. It seems like you can say, yeah, but God promised that, that this many years ago. But the Lord says, now there's going to be an acceleration. Things are going to move quickly. So God says, you know, get ready, expect it. This is your year of turnaround. God says, don't, don't just think about, oh, yep, year of turnaround. God says, no, no, be deliberate. This is. God, I feel like you're almost like, this is. You're not accepting anything less. You're not accepting. You're saying, God, this is. It's not one day. It's not somewhere in the future. It's this year. Come on. This is my season. This is my turnaround. I feel like God's just giving you more of that. Yep, because you're very much, you're, you're one who's, you're saying, okay, God, well, yep, I trust you. Believe you. Because I feel like sometimes you've stepped out and done things. And because out of you wanted to see something happen, but then you realize it wasn't God. And so you're like, okay, I'm going to wait patiently. I'm going to wait patiently. God, I just want to do it, even though that's not your greatest thing, patience. But you've learned that in the season. It's a, a wait. But God says, now is a time, I'm telling you, it's time to pull it down. It's time to pull that down. It's time to say, yep, God, this is it. This is God says, you're going to take some steps of faith that to fulfill these things and God's saying I'm telling you now so you know it's okay God's with you God's with you and God says you're not going to go under you're going to actually walk on the water because you've already had the preparation you've already planned so Lord I thank you this is his turnaround season Father I thank you you know what I feel like there's even been ones you know who laughed at you and they're kind of like well you believe in your God and where's that kind of got you and sometimes there's been people that have been more successful and they kind of look down at the nose at you and it's like well where is your God got you what is this got you and you know what God says I get the last laugh God says I get the last laugh and God says even some of those that have said where is your God God says I'm going to show them where I am and Lord says they're going to be the first ones lining up and say I want to know your God now, Lord, I thank you for it right now. There's going to be much, not, there's already fruit, but God says this is a mega fruit harvest, mega fruit harvest. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Release it. Thank you, Jesus. Lady in the blue, what's your name, sweetie? Rosemary? Okay. Right, right, okay. Father, I thank you for this woman of God right now. I thank you for your anointing upon her life, Father God. Lord, I thank you. You're turning. I see the Lord say, I'm turning your mourning into dancing. I'm turning your sorrow into joy. And the Lord says, don't give up. Come on, don't give up. I, I don't think you would, but sometimes it's like, oh, I've had enough. You feel worn down. You feel wear out. And you sort of like to kid yourself for a season. I'm not going to, you know, just 
We're all like that. Let's go by the house in the country and have this quiet little life. But you know what? You'd be bored after one week. That's kind of what it is. And you know that. And so you've pressed into God and you've hung on to God. And I feel like the Lord's saying, it's almost like you felt like there's been a weight there. You felt like something's been holding you down. But God says, no, no, no. It's been my foundation. God says, I've been in the season of just, I've needed to build that foundation. I've needed to, to put the rock solidness in you. And God says, that what you've perceived sometimes is things holding you back and holding you down. God says, no, it's just me building the foundation. I've been anchoring you to me. And the Lord says, now that you've got that foundation, I feel like God says, you're going to begin. It's like the balloon. He's going to begin to lift you up. You're going to begin to soar. You're going to begin to see the, the promises of God. But the foundation has been important because God says, the things that you're learning, even now, God says, they are. The, what's going to hold you in the winds, in the tough times, in all those things. It's like, I feel like God's had to take you from sand to rock. You know what? To build on rock is the most costly thing. It's the most costly thing. And it's cost you a lot. And there's times where you thought, you know what? I'm over it. I'm going to run. <laughs> and it's like you've had those, you know, it's too hard. It's too much. But you've always come back to the rock. You've always come back and you've said, God, whatever. Men be mobbing. And then someone's like, why did I say that? Why did I ask you that? God, you're kind of there. And you, and sometimes you're crying out, Lord, when he said, you asked me. And you're like, oh. So I feel like, but God is saying it's been important to get that foundation. Because I feel like the Lord is saying, even to you like us, you have no idea what's up ahead. You have no idea what you're doing for the generation. The Lord says, you will look back at this time. And you're like, thank God. I had that foundation. Thank God. The Lord says, I put, a, um, I put a strong prophetic anointing upon your life. And God says, I'm bringing that even to a greater. I see teaching. I see also you're one who's able to reproduce and reproduce and reproduce. And that's been your heart's cry. Lord, I want to reproduce. But you know what I feel like the Lord is saying to you? I feel like marketplace is going to be a key thing for you. I feel like God, you, you're going to stand in a place and think, you're just going to look, how did I get here? It, it's kind of left field what the Lord's doing with you. But I feel like He's preparing you to show you now. But it's going to be ever, you're like, oh my God, this fits me. This fits me. But I feel like through where you are, God's going to cause you to be a woman of influence that people are going to look to. The Lord says, you're going to be my secret weapon in the marketplace. And then many are going to come into the kingdom through you. I feel like that's your heart, but there's been a, a part of you like, Lord, where do I start? How do I reach the lost? What do I do? But the Lord says, I'm going to position you right in the enemy's camp. And the Lord says, I'm going to position you. I'm going to bless you. I'm going to take you from level to level, from glory to glory. You're going to accelerate. Promotion's going to come very quickly, and people are going to look. You know, I feel like the Lord said, an anointing like Joseph. Joseph started. He was betrayed by his very brothers. They're the ones who put him in the pit. Then he had to go to prison. All the things he had to go through. But then he was in and he become a powerful man in the marketplace. And then when his brothers come back, he understood that his brothers didn't do it to him. That was God's purpose to save that generation. And God says, you'll understand it's my purpose to save the generation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. The man out of the door with the glasses, put your hands to him. Rick, Father, I thank you for Rick right now. Lord, I thank you for strength for Rick. God is strengthening you, Rick. I just feel a real strength, and I feel like for you tonight as well, just some revelations come to you. You know, it's like almost, oh, my gosh, what have I been thinking? You know, what have I, and so, you know what, it's just like, duh, it's kind of like that, so obvious. It's like, what have I, and, and I feel like that through that, it's like now, it's like this is just going to fuel you. It's going to fuel you to propel even further, to go even greater. And God says, I feel like for you, there's great uh, doors open in front of you, but there's been the enemy at the gates. He's been there. He's been trying to buffet you. And I feel like you're at a stage of the greatest breakthrough of your life. The greatest victory that you've ever seen 
in your life. And that's why the enemy's been opposing you because it's a great door. It's a great breakthrough. It's greater than ever. But lately, it's been the load. It's been the load and the stuff and the the heaviness and, and all just one after another, after another, after another. And it stopped you from being able to even just feel like you've got strength. And so I feel like now the Lord is just almost for you. It's like just shaking yourself off. And that's like, as you shake yourself off, it's like the enemy's tried to have you just underneath, 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 underneath. And God says, now there's a fresh strength and you're going to stand now. You're going to stand and you're going to say, okay, this is it. But I feel like because now as you strengthen yourself in the Lord, there's going to be a greater authority. You know, like, get out of here, devil. Get out of here. And just like I see you just walking through and stomping on them. One after the other, after the other, after the other. God says they're not greater than you. They're not bigger than you. God says you're just going to stand off. You know, the Lord's reminding me even like Gulliver's travel, you know, it's like the giant had these little tiny, little what they call them, lily imp things, I don't know, lily puddings or whatever, that were holding him down. But he was a strong man. And all he had to do was just get up and they come up and Lord says that's what it's like for you. You're just going to snap the enemy. Come on, you're just going to get him out of your way. And you know what? It's like you know. You know what God's promised you. You know what He's spoken to you. And it's like you're just all of a sudden it's like slap the top around. What was I thinking? And you're like, devil, what were you thinking? And now that's going to give you strength to overcome. To overcome. And the Lord said it's going to be great. It's it. What this is the, the biggest door and biggest breakthrough you've ever seen. So, Father, I thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can we, can we give the Lord a hand clap tonight? Okay. Amen. Go ahead and be seated. Um, and I just, um, Ginger, the lady that, is it Cody? Well, I mean, is that your name? Was it Cody? Okay, are you with, is this gentleman here with you that's, okay, so are you, are you a married couple? All right, just wanted to be sure, all right. I just couldn't let this, it just hit my spirit, I just cannot let this go. I felt like you've both been through a real season of great discouragement, and it's like you're going around the mountain, round and, you just keep going round and round the same mountain, and just about the time you feel like you're about to cycle out, it's like you've been in cycles just cycle back through the same thing over and over and it's just caused continual discouragement and the Lord said even you know like the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness they went through uh, many different types of tests and I feel like that you've been through some times of testings but the Lord says don't keep your eye on the test get your eye on coming out because I am cycling you out. And the Lord said, the time of discouragement is is turning into a time of great encouragement. And the Lord said, the enemy has come with fear. He's tried to bombard you with fear, the fear of, of loss, the fear of lack, the fear of not having enough, the fear of just not getting what you need just a lot of different areas the fear has been trying to uh, erect itself as a stronghold over your life and the lord says um, son and daughter just pray and trust me and the lord says you tried to work out so many things yourself you've tried to open doors yourself out of desperation but the lord says i brought you to a place of complete trust and trust in me because I'm going to do it for you, says God. And the Lord says, I've already gone before you and and uh, and fulfilled that. It's like I just see a, like a huge crevice. It's like you're looking at your promise, but there's this big crevice. Like you have to leap over this crevice to fully get to it. The Lord says, no. The Lord says, I'm going to carry you over that crevice it's not a matter of you having strength to leap over it it's not in your strength to do that says God I am going to carry you through this says the Lord so the Lord says be encouraged breakthrough is on your horizon says the Lord and the Lord says for all the discouragement I'm giving courage to you be strong be of good faith Have courage, says the Lord, because I have given you the land. And when I give it, 
the Lord says, I empower you to receive it. So, Father, we thank you for this. Lord, I bind up the enemy that has come against this family. I take authority over, over every demonic assignment against their marriage. And the Lord says, I called you to be together. The enemy's tried every which way to, to separate you and to divide you from your fulfillment together. The Lord says, I've called you to fulfill this together, says the Lord. And the Lord says, stand strong together, for you shall see that gate open, and you're going to walk through with flying colors, says the Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this marriage and for their commitment to you and their commitment to one another in Jesus' name. You know, when you're called to walk through something with your spouse, the enemy throws everything at you to keep you, to keep you from walking through it together. And then if he can separate you, it causes you to be weaker. So that's broken in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen. All right, Apostle Mika. Now we can give God a great big hand clap, man. Man, in Jesus' name. <laughs> Hallelujah. You know, this, this is what Friday nights is all about. It's not like a Sunday service, very structured, but it's an open forum kind of for the Holy Spirit to do what he wants to do. We, we allow him to do it on Sunday too, but Friday nights, it seems, you know, we've been doing this for over 30-something years. And... Uh, uh, in our other church where we pastored for almost 15 years. <clears throat> but it seems like through all the years that the Holy Spirit always does something a little bit different. You know, even though, you know, Jesus said in Hebrews 13, the same yesterday, day, and forever, but the Holy Spirit, he can, he can do anything each day. He's fresh and anew every day, the Scripture says. Glory to God. Listen, also tonight for we... Uh, we're going to receive an offering, so if you'll uh, get your checkbook out and go ahead and sign the, your name on it and pass it over to two people, and they get to sign in the amount. Uh, now, just tease it. Don't do that, please. Okay. Uh, but if you're giving cash, it's, you need an envelope for records for that, for sure. Uh, if you're writing a check, you make a check out to LCI. But have you know that you can? God wants to strengthen us. He, he wants us, like David encouraged himself in the Lord. Sometimes there's nobody around but you and God and say, God, here I am again. And so we have to just be real to God. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our strengths anyway. And as we begin to call upon him, the Bible says his arm is not too short. He always knows exactly what we have need of. I want to thank Jonathan and Gloria, these guys here, stand up, guys. They're actually married. They're a couple. Amen. Uh, and Joe, okay, Joe, uh, a bass player, which is Gloria's brother, okay. And this is Oz. Oz, is that is that it right? Uzi, okay. So a drummer, and this is Jessica up here. So it was good. To, I love your piano playing. Keep going. You're doing awesome. Okay. All right. So we love and bless them. Uh, Josh is uh, leading another conference uh, this tonight. And uh, he's also, Josh will be here Sunday. But uh, tonight he's, you know, I give him the freedom to, you know, hey, let's reach another generation. Let's do this thing. You know, how many know it's, it's not all about us? Right? And so uh, if you got your checks made out this, I believe this. If you want to give to our building fund, most of you know that our building, uh, how many is here for the first time? You've never been here before. So good to have you. Thank you for coming, uh, serving King Jesus. Uh, LifeGate is a place to grow and call home. Uh, it's a place where you can be rooted and planted and be grounded in the Word of God. We're more of a, probably a Bible church than any, any non-denomination, of course. But I believe in the Word of God. We built our, our whole thing based upon prayer and the Word of God. And so uh, where our building, the picture of it over here top on the left is, the, is phase one. And the bottom picture, the little smaller picture, they, they minimized it to be smaller because that's actually phase one and phase two together. Uh, this first building here that we're building now, which is actually just, you could throw a rock over 820 or airport freeway here <clears throat> and almost hit the building over there. It's pretty close. Uh, but it'll, the first building was seat 100, uh, 200, a little bit more than 200. And phase two will seat up to five or 600. And so we're, we're believing God for growth, you know. Uh, listen, you know, I've already had people prophesying, when are you going to start phase three? 
I said, man, I'm not even finished with phase one yet. You know? So, so, uh, but if you don't have a church home, we'd love to or come and visit us on Sunday morning at 10 a.m. This is kind of, this is the altar. Uh, it doesn't look like that now, but it's, it's sheet rocked and insulated and uh, the altar still looks like that. It's wood. Uh, but uh, this is just the sanctuary part. That's the sound booth in the back. Uh, and the uh, TV, the room, there's a TV. That's some carpenter. I don't know who this guy is. Uh, he's, uh, but uh, cut some stuff. This is the, uh, they're coming around the home stretch. Three sides are done. They're coming around the south side there. This is the, this is the mortar that'll be stuck on the outside. But you can see the crown mold at the top beginning to take place. And the wood part is what, I uh, mean, another guy did last Friday and Saturday. So uh, it's hard to do stuff when you're 24, 26 feet off the ground. But we got it done. And so now that is actually white now because they've got white foam all over it. And it's fixing to be stuccoed this week. And so our building is coming along really, really well. So if you'd like to get, we're only going to receive one offering tonight. So, uh, we, you know, if you want to give it to our building fund, you can also give on lifegatechurch.org. And you can just put it on there. You can put in your credit card or password. You never have to do your credit card again. Just use your password and go in and you can you can sow a seed. Some people just sow a seed monthly, uh, $30 a month, $50 a month. Some give to $100 a month uh, to our building fund. So if you want to give one, one time seed, we welcome that as well. So we're at a point we're paying uh, rent here and we're paying interest over there. And so that's our part, all part of building, right? And so uh, if you're making your checks out, you spell uh, thousand T H O U uh, no just just teasing you no really uh, if you want to sow a seed I want you to connect a faith statement with that uh, if you're sowing a seed in the LifeGate Church you, I know your believers if you have a church home your tithe belongs at the storehouse which means we're the house of God that you go to but scripture the offering you can give it anywhere anytime and it's you're getting a blessing upon the offering okay you don't get blessed on the tithe the tithe puts you in covenant with God. And then you get a blessing on the 90% because your 90% will go further because you're in covenant with God with a 10%. Does that make sense to you? And so uh, I want you to lay your hands on that seed that you're believing God right now. So, Father, you see every gift where you're sowing into this uh, Australian beautiful apostle prophetess of God that give a message tonight. Father, whether they're giving to that or, Father, just giving to the building fund or just sowing a seed to you. Lord, we thank you for a time of giving. Lord, you invented the principle of sowing and reaping, of giving and sowing. And you said, give and it shall be given. Lord, not that it might be given. It could be given. You give us a promise and said, it shall be given, pressed down. That means somebody can't take it from you. Shaken together, meaning everything will work together for good. And running over, which means you're going to have more than enough. So, Father, we put you in charge of this seed. We put you in charge of this offering to LifeGate Church. Lord, we're just going to handle it for you to go to the place that they want it sowed. So, Father, we give you glory and praise for a time of sowing a seed in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Listen. Oh, this is a wonderful day that the Lord hath made. We shall rejoice. Did you enjoy the violin? glorious I, I, for some reason I, I mean of course it's always good but I just love that it just it's just something fresh and new is it's, it's uh, certain songs that that instrument is in uh, it's kind of like I like the saxophone I'm believing God for a saxophone player at life game I know some people I don't know I believe in God for a saxophonist that will come and I you know so I believe it that that these guys don't play an instrument just because they they got something. I know Josh, he's told, we have talked hours and hours to the fact is that we're not just up here playing an instrument. We're not exalting our gifts so that we can show you how, how many licks I can hit. Josh doesn't put, and we've talked about this, I don't want him to put anybody on that altar that doesn't have a heart for God. That's why I worship all, the Holy Spirit always flows at LifeGate. I don't care if it's a Sunday morning, a Friday night, whatever it may be. There's always the Holy Spirit in charge. He does some incredible stuff. So, <sighs> Prophet Julie, thank you. Good word of strengthening us in the things of the Lord. Listen, be here. Amen. Go ahead and give her a good hand clap. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Apostle... Uh, Greg will be with us Sunday morning, 
And like I said, hey, he, he's already said he's going to teach you a few Aussie words and teach the Bible from front to back, or back to front. He's going to teach it the other way. Right? He's going to turn it upside. He got some great things from from uh, uh, Aussie country over there. So it's the down under. Okay, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, Sunday morning, he's going to over and under. Hey, over and out, over and out. Over and out. Over and up, which is that. Okay, stand with me. Let's be dismissed tonight. It's only five o'clock in Hawaii, so you're going to be okay. All right. It was a blessing to be in the house of God. And we'd be like David of old said, It was good to be in the house of the Lord. If you're visiting with us tonight, thank you so much for visiting with us. Let us know about what you're seeing. Those who received the prophetic word tonight, um, did, did, did you get did his, own, his own streaming video? Okay, you can go to LifeGate. Uh, you can go to uh, LifeGateChurch uh, on, li on uh, Facebook, LifeGateChurch.org, and there's deals across the top. Click on videos. It's there. And you're gonna have to probably watch the whole thing for your word because they don't separate them out. So this is why they put this thing on on uh, video here that you record. Have your phones ready for that. So. Anyway, wasn't it good in the spirit tonight? In Jesus' name, let's bless God. Father, we bless you tonight. Give you all glory and praise and honor. Thank you for Julia's word, God, that you put in her heart. Father, we ask you to strengthen her body tonight. Father, she's poured out. Lord, pour back into her and strengthen her. Father, we thank you for the long journey. You gave them safe. And Lord, while they're here in the U.S. and going to the conferences, the conference, the conference, Lord, that you will continue to bless them and protect them. And we give you all glory and praise. Father, may your face be made to shine upon us tonight. May your grace be sufficient. So, Father, as we go and walk through our daily lives, Lord, that you're always there and your angels are around about us protecting us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. As LifeGate tradition is, you've got to hug at least two or three people before you leave. We love and bless you. See you Sunday morning, 10 a.m.